Hey there everybody, welcome back to another episode in Project Car. So this time we're going to have a look at um, the engine. So that's all I've been working on over the last couple of months because the car is in the body shop and there's not much else to do. So I know we've already covered the initials about um, the carburetors I'm using, the, the triple Vava setup. In this particular episode we're going to have a little bit uh, of a look at the, the new fuel lines which are the um, braided PTFE fuel lines that also work with the new E10 fuel, uh, especially in Europe. Um, we're also going to have a quick look at how the tools I'm using, how, to, how, how I cut them to size uh, and put them in place. Um, we're going to have a check, uh, we're going to have a look at the, the copper nuts I'm using because I've decided to change them once again, so it's the, the third time I'm changing them, so we're going to have a quick look at that. Um, as I said, we'll have a look at the tools that I'm using for it and probably we'll have a quick look at some other things that I've been doing over the last couple of months, especially with regards to the Mini Brunhilde. So let's get to work. Alright then guys, so as I mentioned, I'm using a different fuel line than before. So the rubber I've gotten rid of and I'm using what is called a braided PTFE uh, fuel line. Basically what it is, is a steel outer uh, braiding around it. And then the inside is, as you can just see here, the white is like a plastic tube. And that stops it from vaporizing, so you can also use it inside the car. You don't have to run it outside the car anymore, uh, which is part of it will be run through the inside of the car in my case, just to protect from the elements. Um, so the way to cut it, at least what I've been doing, is I um, put a little tape on the outer side where I want to cut it. So that stops it from uh, fraying and um, falling apart, really. And then obviously you mark it and cut it with, uh, in my case, I use an angle grinder for that. Then secondly, I use uh, two separate tools. So these ones can go on your uh, on your vise uh, if you have uh, metal clamps. So these are, I believe, aluminium. They're a little bit softer and stop the, um, the parts from damaging when you lock them in here and tighten them up. I use this um, to tighten them with uh, once they're on the engine block itself. Again, this is um, made so it protects the, the paint and the material. And you can also see here there's different sizes. Um, you've got them in fixed size. I've gone for a, a variable one that I can adjust. And instead of having a metric or imperial, you've got the AN numbers on here. So you've got uh, six, which I use for the fuel lines, and 10 will be the oil lines. Um, but it goes all the way from zero to 12. So those are the tools I'm using, like I said, an angle grinder to cut them. And then we'll have a little look on how to install it on the engine block itself. So as you can see, I've already installed uh, the first, well, all three carburetors actually. Um, so I've got two T sections where the fuel can go through and into the carb. And then the last one is, uh, you can just see it in the screen if I adjust it. There you go. Uh, it's a uh, standard 90, degree, uh, 90 degrees banyo connection. So these are all banyos made for the Vebas. You've got different sizes uh, for different brand of carburetors. So how does it work? So I've shown you how the fuel line works and basically I've got a loose part here. So uh, first thing you take the collar off. Just be careful as you do because there's obviously there's parts inside. So this bit slides onto your fuel hose. So let me just grab the part. We've got our pipe in. It's worth leaving the tape on until you've got the collar in its place. So that then slides over it. He says. That appears to be easier set than them. So that goes around. Then you've got your um, main part. That silver ring goes eventually on the inside. So you will push the um, plastic tube inside and the metal part goes around it. And then you slide the whole part in one go onto uh, the little nipple that you have on the black section here. So. What then happens is, obviously this is inside, but I'm just going to put it on because I can't hold everything with two hands. So this then sits around it. You then have the metal color, or sorry, the, the silver colored ring inside. And then as you then tighten that one around, um, everything is tightened and sealed. So it's a very simple system. Uh, it also allows you to take it apart again if you ever have to. Obviously there's different versions of it out there, but this is the one I went for. So the way I cut um, the length of each fuel line is I want to make sure they're nice and tight and uh, not uh, vibrating around or anything. So they're nice and tight. I put one end on in its place and then aligned it with the other side, cut it to where I want to have it uh, and then install the parts and then screw it into place. 
And then obviously I repeated the process on this and as you can see the last one which is the feed in line here at the corner of the screen um, isn't fed up isn't fed yet as it isn't attached because I don't know how long it needs to be uh, for the time being I've just put in some tape just to make sure it stays clean no dust can get in and I'm using this um, a because it's it allows me to run it through the car it's um, it's safer than the rubber hoses also it allows me to use e10 fuel which is now a massive thing in Europe um, because it doesn't eat the rubber over time so hopefully this system will work nicely plus I think it looks really nice especially with the black and silver combination with the rest of the engine so then we go back to the drawing table so as I mentioned I'm gonna change the nuts for the third time that holds everything in place so first off I used your standard uh, nylock nuts the problem with these is as I found out is that the um, ring inside the nylock ring inside with heat applied it starts to unravel itself so then I went for your standard copper nuts um, they are not nylock or anything like that they don't hold themselves in place so obviously in order to secure them I figured you know I can use some um, Loctite I'm using the the green 638 which is high strength and temperature uh, normally used on bearings but Apparently it works really good for engine uh, nuts and bolts as well. I've used it as well on the, uh, um, the studs that are in the block. Having said that, um, I wasn't too happy with them because they needed washers and everything. So I was like, okay, this isn't great. So then, um, actually my dad, being the engineer that he is, said, you know what, you need to get these flanged copper nuts, which I have here. As you can see here on the outside, and hopefully the camera picks up nicely, you can see these two little, I don't know what to call them, wings? Or, um, but they lock lock the nut in place. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm using this torque seal that we use on the aircraft uh, at work, and the engineers use it to uh, align the nuts and bolts to make sure that they're not come loose, and it's really easy to spot if anything has come off. So I'm applying that as well, and I think I've shown you the process on the uh, one of the previous episodes uh, where we specialised it on the 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 carburetors themselves. Workshop manual, it states that you have to torque them to 30 newton meters. That is a slight issue because I can't get in with my uh, torque wrench. Uh, I can show you what I mean by that. As you can see here, there's not a lot of space to get the socket of the torque wrench in place. Um, so I'm kind of looking like a, moment, a, a, a torque wrench that has like a spanner type thing. I haven't been able to find one in the right size because all I seem to find is the ones that go from 17 mil and up. This is a 13, so I need to find someone else, something else. Then what I did is, oh, what I did, what my dad and I did is we installed the um, control arms for the carburetors. Obviously, they still need to be adjusted. Um, I'll do that once the engine is in place and everything can then be attached to it. So we shortened, first of all, we shortened the, the axle or the, the bar, everything is attached to because it stuck out and I was like, I don't really like it. So we've cut it short to make sure that everything fits nicely. It's sturdy, there's no vibrations in the system whatsoever. Then we attached it to the number one and the number two carburetors, and then the number three, which is just out of the picture there, sorry. Number three here will provide the vacuum for the brake booster. So obviously I need to uh, figure out what size this is and then get the right adapter to then go with a probably, I'm thinking like an AN10 size braided hose to route to the brake booster. So then, once these are all um, fine-tuned, which like I said, we'll do once the engine is in place, we've got to adjust this um, uh, spring, which is inside here. Now this is to allow for abrupt acceleration application, and then this will dampen the effect before it comes to your carburetor, so it doesn't shock the system itself. The problem is with my new setup is that this one has become too short, so I'm going to have to find something that bridges the gap. Lastly, we have got a, an additional um, screw and nut in place here. It's actually a screw with a flange nut on the top, and that will be so that I can apply a spring, and that will allow me that the whole system will automatically close if the accelerator pedal is lifted. Um, because of the spring tension, so the throttles don't remain open uh, if, if anything was to happen. Then eventually what I need to do is run the choke, the choke, sorry, choke, choke, um, the choke cable that runs through here to attach all these, uh, which I've seen a lot of people remove. 
I'm going to keep it so that I've got a cold start application if I ever needed it. Uh, plus I think it's, it's just nice to have and not mess around with the carburetors or take things away that were actually intended to be on there. So as I mentioned, the next step will be to replace all the nylon nuts with the copper flanged version. So I've, applied, I've um, attached a 30mm socket. Unfortunately I don't have a double open spanner. So what I've done is I've taken your uh, standard M6 bolt with two nuts in them to lock them in place, which will then fit into my spanner towards the other end I'll apply the torque wrench. Now hopefully this doesn't make too much of a difference to the actual um, torque applied to the nut itself, but um, we'll find out. I think it's close enough, at least for my application. Um, so hopefully this will do the job. Sounds like that's doing it. Seems to be working. I mean, obviously this one is now torqued to 30 as well. So I'm gonna try the bottom ones next. And um, with a bit of luck, that's the first one. Then in place, you might be able to just see, probably not actually. Let me move the camera slightly. Just a very small amount of damage on the nuts already. Um, unfortunately, that's where my, um, my wrench slipped off, so. But it looks like they're nice in place. The torque to 30 Nm or at least near enough, I think. So I'll repeat the same process at the bottom and then I'll apply the torque, the torque seal. And um, that's the first carburetor in place now. Now we finally managed to get all four of them torqued to 30 Nm. Um, so we're going to apply the cross check torque seal. Um, it's just a, a little bit of a paste uh, that will apply to it. So that's the torque seal now applied. You can see the two red lines on the nuts. So the idea is that if they come undone, the, um, the red line will break once it's dried and hardened out. And then it will be very easy for me to see during regular maintenance which of the nuts need retightening. Well guys, unfortunately that's all we have time for today. So uh, we've replaced all the nuts with the new copper flange type ones. We've torque sealed everything, so on this side the carburetors are completely installed. So the only thing left to do is um, fine tune the control arms once the engine is in place and it's all hooked up to the accelerator pedal. And I've got some really interesting news is that I'm going to um, build this engine in uh, the Alpina style air intake. So the little um, uh, inlets that you see here, the trumpets, they're coming off, we're gonna have a 90 degree elbow and then the Alpina box on top. So unfortunately it will mask most of the work we've done so far, but it will be all correct, period correct, which we'll need for the rallies. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode, it was useful to you. Um, perhaps you didn't know about the uh, torque wrench trick yet, so hopefully that was some use to you. And uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe, uh, like and comment below the video if you haven't already. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'll see you again in the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.